One of the things that I've noticed over the last 27 years is the reduction in awareness among many of our people regarding who we are. And it kind of ebbs and flows. There'll be periods where I'll see some students come through and they have this wave of knowledge, right? <clears throat> and I remember when I first started talking about the Moors while I was in graduate school at Temple, most people didn't know really the legacy of this chapter in human history. And for me, it never made any sense. I give high honors to all those good mores who sought to live a life of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So much of what has motivated me to continue this work, this research, is because I know how vital it is for transforming how we see ourselves we have gone through a great deal. In fact, some of you may be familiar with um, all the celebrations that occurred a couple of weeks ago, uh, or I should say commemorations, uh, 1619. Some of you may know what I'm talking about, right? 1619 is when the first Africans were brought to the British colonial Americas, ended up ultimately being the first servants, and then later the first slaves of African ancestry. The fact that so much of our history tends to focus on this idea of the legacy of slavery, I would argue is, is a huge part of why we're often so confused about our identity. And one of the things that I was asked to do today is to talk a little bit about the history of the Moors in Spain. One of the things that I found in teaching them since 1992, first at the University in West Virginia, which is West Virginia University, and then ultimately Berea College in Berea, Kentucky, in the Department of History, Department of African American Studies, Department of Africana Studies, one of the things that I've noticed over the, the last 27 years is a reduction in awareness among many of our people regarding who we are. And it kind of ebbs and flows. There'll be periods where I'll see some students come through and they have this wave of knowledge, right? And they'll talk about people like Dr. Ben Yurkani or Dr. Ivan Van Sur, um, or uh, uh, Dr. Jacob Carruthers, right? People who are making contributions to the areas of Africana history, or Africana studies. And I remember when I first started talking about the Moors while I was in graduate school at Temple, most people didn't know really the legacy of this chapter in human history. And for me, it never made any sense, given the fact that the Moorish contribution to Western civil civilization is arguably the single greatest contribution to the advances in the sciences and what we know as the university system at large. There would be no university system as we know it were it not for the Moorish presence in Europe. The fact that many people don't know it is not because it isn't true, it's because most people are, are steered away from it, or they're given a whole different uh, assessment of what it is. Their understanding when they talk about the Moors, and most people see the Moors in the context only of being Arabs, 
But in fact, again, I have to keep repeating this, but the Moors were not Arabs. The Moors, for the most part, were Muslim or Muslim. But the Moors are not Arab any more than the Turks are Arabs by virtue of being <laughs> Muslims. Right? But this idea of trying to confuse the identity of the Moors clearly has everything to do with the impact that Africa's Moors had on Europe. Now, I know most of us already have an understanding, you know, what that means when you say Moor. We focus, of course, on saying that we're descendants of Moroccans and born in America. The presumption is then we're saying that we are only descendants of the city-state, which is what it would have been in the medieval period, of Morocco. We know better than that, because we know ultimately it goes back to the Moabites. And ironically, one of the first things that I discovered when I was studying this history of the Moors in Spain was that the old Latin name for the al Moravids was the Moabitarum, Moabites. The al Moravids was one of the dynasties that invaded the Iberian Peninsula in the 11th and 12th centuries. So to find out that the name that the Spanish and the Portuguese and other Latin speakers, or the Romance language speakers, was Moabitarum, referring to Almoravids, was in and of itself incredibly revealing. Because then that's when people talk about trying to find the real foundations of one's argument about you know, who, who are the Moors and what's the connection. The other thing is, the Moors are responsible for changing, literally, the complexion of Europe. What do I mean by that? Because of this invasion in the 8th century, in 711 AD, and mind you, that coming of Moors into the Iberian Peninsula, which you know today is Spain and Portugal, that invasion was not the first time that people came off the African continent or came in from areas of Asia. That was the period, however, when they came in and established control over the region. So, Islam. Islam is So, basically, this period of a Moorish presence in Europe starts in the 8th century, which is almost 1,300 years ago. But to this day, if you talk to the average person and ask them the only thing about the Moors, they don't know what you're talking about. Which is why, clearly, I see the importance of this work in the classroom. And many times I have students, you know, at the uh, uh, outset say to me, if they just know that I'm on campus, I say, hey, Dr. Bay, so I heard your classes are really interesting. I heard you, you're always talking about the Moors. And I'm like, oh, yeah, do you know anything? Well, I didn't know anything about it before, but I know about the Moors from a couple of students. I want to take the class. This includes Asiatic and European students who are intrigued to find out about this, this legacy. So what I'm going to spend time doing over the next 45 minutes or so is outlining some of the key factors that make the Moors significant, not just in terms of Spain, but in terms of Europe and the Western world at large. This series and many others can only be found exclusively on Amexa. Quickly sign up with our three-step process to get started. The link to access your trial is in the description below. We'll see you in the next chapter. Peace and love.